morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to the second webinar on open source in energy access hosted by the N Access Foundation. Uh, for those who couldn't join the first part of this webinar series a couple of weeks ago, my name is Gabrielle Pammesberger. I work with the Alliance for Rural Electrification as its Africa lead. ARE is the largest international business association for the distributed renewable energy sector, promoting the development of a sustainable off-grid energy industry. We are doing this by supporting the private sector um, and uh, key institutional stakeholders and through a wide range of uh, market building activities aimed at accelerating energy access in emerging markets. Hence, it's a great pleasure um, for ARE to support this webinar series on open source in energy access, hosted by our valued member, the N Access Foundation. Uh, this webinar will discuss um, how open sourcing innovation in the energy access sector can benefit uh, the different market players, increase efficiency, and hence accelerate the development of the sector. So whereas the first webinar was looking at open source in energy access from the innovators perspective, uh, today's second webinar will discuss open sourcing from the adopters point of view. So how can companies and organizations benefit from adopting open source innovations? What are advantages and disadvantages? And how can the whole sector benefit from open source? So we will hear first-hand experience from adopters um, of open source innovations about their lessons learned um, and how they benefit from using open source material. And we will discuss what is needed for an uptake of open source innovations by the sector. So, but let me briefly introduce today's speakers before I hand over to Fabio, who will moderate today's session. So I would suggest uh, to do just a, a very brief tour de table and ask each of the speakers uh, to very briefly introduce her or himself, just one or two sentences uh, about yourself, your organization, um, and, and, and your role in the organization. Um, so maybe I start with Mr. Fabio De Bascale, he's co-founder of an Access Foundation, and you, uh, who will also moderate uh, today's session. So. Fabio, please. Hi, and uh, thanks for participating, and, and thanks for the panelists too, uh, for joining. Thanks, Gabriel. Um, I'm Fabio De Pascale. I'm the uh, chairperson at the Anaxis Foundation and a founder of the foundation. Um, and uh, uh, I also manage a company. I'm the CEO of a com company called Nextgrid, which does mini grid solutions uh, for, uh, for companies in Nigeria. And uh, I'm very glad to be moderating today's um, today's webinar with our panelists. Okay, thank you, Fabio. So now I would like to welcome also today's panelists. Maybe I start with Miss uh, Katharine Adelman. She is a founder and CEO CEO of Fosera, uh, a manufacturer of high quality solar home systems uh, for rural electrification. Katrin, please. Hi, um, thank you very much for the kind introduction. My name is Katrin Adelman, founder and general manager of Facera. And as Gabriele already described, um, are we a manufacturer of um, quality solar home systems. We're located in Germany, having our own factory in Thailand. And some of our products you can see here in the back. And the connection to the whole um, webinar is that we have implemented the Open Paygo token in our products. So very excited to share later more about that. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Katrine. Then uh, I will turn to Mr. Vaiba Vaidya, uh, Director of Information Systems and Engineering at Simu Solar, a leading provider of energy productive use um, equipment and financing solutions, uh, mainly for agribusinesses. Uh, I, we, so Simu Solar is, uh, is, is quite uh, recently engaged with an access on, uh, on really both contributing and adopting on the open source side. Uh, we do productive use solutions um, and our, our range of uh, say water pumps and the fishing lights that we provide is, is wider than what's available from um, regular distributors. So our, 
main interest is, uh, is, is making sure that other distributors in a, and the widest product range can be enabled with some of the technology that we have and hence um, an interest in open source. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and then I will turn to Mr. Mark van uh, Niekerk, um, Reg Regional Operations Manager at FRES, a Foundation Rural Energy Services, a Dutch uh, non-profit organization that advances electrification in rural Africa by establishing commercial energy as a service companies under local management. Sure, Mark. that's a great introduction. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, Regional Operations Manager in um, Uganda, Guinea-Bissau, and responsible also for developing a new pipeline of projects um, in several other countries in Africa, and recently in the, the productive use space as well. Um, so we've got some projects at the moment in Mali and Burkina Faso with that, and we do mini grids as well as solar home systems. So recently going into using the open pagey token system. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. So um, thanks for, for these brief introductions. So uh, I will hand over now to Fabio, who will moderate the session. And uh, yes, wishing you all a, a very insightful webinar and excellent discussion. Thank you, Fabio, and over to you. I'm, I'm pretty excited about um, today's session because uh, uh, as, uh, as some of the attendees may know, we had another webinar a couple of weeks ago. You can find the recording online. And that webinar really uh, went broadly into open source and uh, how open source uh, can almost be interpreted and declined in the energy access space. Um, this is something that we are... Um, uh, very excited about the fact that clearly open source can have different meanings. Um, but today the focus is slightly different. And in fact, the focus is really on the adoption. Um, what we'd like to show with this webinar and discuss with the panelists is uh, what their experiences were with open source uh, and the adoption of open source. And um, hopefully also have a very uh, candid conversation about that. Uh, we tend to think that it's better to just uh, be quite upfront also about the challenges that uh, a certain activity, including open source adoption, can bring. Um, but also, hopefully, you will be able to um, leave this webinar uh, with a really good idea about uh, uh, why you uh, may want to um, start using and adopting open source solutions and uh, um, how others have done it and what they gained out of that uh, that particular work. Um, I'll, I'll do a super brief introduction on open source broadly. Uh, I keep it very short and I, uh, I'm i gonna uh, effectively just keep it very high level uh, and very quick. And the reason for that is that I don't wanna take too much time away from the, uh, the panelists. Um, yet I also think it's nice to give us a bit of context uh, um, around uh, around the conversation. So, uh, Enaxis uh, is a foundation that was born out of the uh, wish to actually bring and see more open source in the energy access sector, a sector which is very resource constrained, as we all know, uh, a sector where a lot of innovation happens uh, because we need it, because we need to develop the tools and the solutions that just don't exist uh, in uh, other contexts. And, and we think that a lot of that can actually be done using uh, open source and then shared with others without actually damaging uh, any of the uh, companies involved in this. Um, so generally speaking, we think SDG 7 does require innovation. And we think a lot of companies are doing innovation in the sector. And uh, in order to do that, they're actually using very scarce resources. And so in, in a nutshell, we ask we actually ask ourselves, well, if you're using very scarce resources to do some innovation, could you and should you maybe just share it with others so others can take advantage of that and avoid reinventing the wheel? Um, and this is the high level, uh, the high level reason, but uh, really there is a number of companies that also realize that uh, using or sharing things in open source allows you to reach a wider market. Um, you start 
be seen also as a solution provider by, by others and others will start knowing your products and your services because they know your open source solution. Um, additionally, uh, you can improve on existing work. And uh, what you see here is uh, a, a quite famous open source uh, uh, tale, which is the, uh, the secret cookies recipe from Grandma. Uh, where um, grandma has this fantastic cookies recipe and it's secret and nobody knows about it. Uh, and the kids would like to do the cookies, but they can't really because it's a secret sauce and a secret recipe. But at some point, grandma is no more. Uh, that happens. And now we have no cookies anymore. And so the question is, couldn't grandma instead open source a recipe? Uh, we would suggest a Creative Commons license. And uh, at that point, uh, the kids can actually keep doing the, the cookies over and over again, and also can improve them. So instead of using vanilla, maybe they can put chocolate chips. Um, that's that's a very typical open source story, um, but it's something that in its simplicity actually tells uh, something very obvious. Open source is something we already do. We share our recipes with others and we improve on them and we tailor them and we make them better or more fitting our needs. And so that's why open source is very successful already in other contexts. And we think it could be as successful in the energy access uh, sector. And then there is a, a, um, a leveraging the community part, um, open source, um, typically um, creates a community around solutions and innovations and products. And um, um, and that always gives back, uh, even if uh, very often that's a bit of an unintended consequence. You start having people that talk about what you do and improve on what you do and maybe go even beyond what you initially had planned with your solution. Um, but it's actually very nice because it, it, it widens the horizon and typically makes for a better product. And finally, uh, there is an idea of leveraging data. Um, there is a lot of companies that actually share the tools or share a part of, of their infrastructure and, and solutions, but um, either because they are not allowed to share the data or because they prefer to monetize the data, they then leave the data as a separate block that can be monetized later. So the tools are then open source and can be used by anybody. But really, if you then also want to access the data, that becomes a paid service. And so these are all um, also ways to, to see that open source doesn't imply uh, no revenues. Open source actually is another channel of distribution in a sense uh, with a lot of very interesting side advantages that I just mentioned, but it doesn't mean that you can't monetize your solution. So uh, open source doesn't imply free in terms of uh, no payment. That's not a one-on-one -on -one, uh, association. Um, that was uh, that was uh, in in a nutshell what open source really uh, could be in the sector. And as I said, it was a really a really short uh, short take on this. Um, but but now I think it's a good time to actually start talking content, and it would be great to start uh, hearing from the panelists uh, what is their experience with open source. Um, so I'm just gonna follow the same uh, the same order as before. I'm gonna go with Catherine first, and then Mark, and then Vibhav. And what I'd love to know is um, what is open source for you, and uh, what is your experience with open source? And uh, you know, if you can give us one specific case or multiple ones, if you like, Catherine, uh, floor is yours. And um, let me share what open source technology we have implemented in our product. It's the um, Open PayGo token. And um, I'm sure all of you are aware that Pay as you Go is like, meanwhile, the distribution method for solar home systems, especially in rural Africa, because it really removes this upfront barrier um, of people having to pay. And um, we, as for Sarah, have positioned ourselves in a market in a way that we see ourselves very clearly as system manufacturer. So we have great engineers, we have our own product, uh, production plan, so we make great hardware, but we are not the ones who um, would do like the whole software pays you go back end. And um, so the question is like always, how do you connect the software to the hardware? And in the past, it has been like this, that there are um, a few players in the market who offered this dedicated um, software solution and us as hardware um, suppliers then had to implement a certain piece of hardware to make yeah, the connection between, um, or to make the system being able to understand what the backend wants from the system. Um, 
it has been it has been a great um, first start in the market to get that going. But um, since as the market has uh, developed, um, we had more and more players offering those um, backend solutions, making it a bit difficult for us as a manufacturer to maintain for several different backend suppliers um, different hardware solutions. So um, we had in the end um, four different solutions implemented, meaning you need to have from each product four different hardware solutions, um, which made like stock keeping extremely complicated. It made innovation extremely complicated because you're not changing one product, you're basically changing three, uh, four products at the same time. And this was just like a struggle. And then um, we heard from NXS that there was this open Pago token, which would allow um, us to implement one piece of hardware and that all um, pay-as-you-go providers could then hook into that. And um, we basically just have like one hardware source and then you could from there feed to different software backends. Um, therefore, <laughs> it wasn't a long discussion in our company if we would do that or not. Um, it has been really for us um, a great help, making really um, engineering a lot easier because you're not developing any more for products. It made innovation cycles a lot shorter because you could basically really focus on getting new innovations to the market and not more or less yeah, doing the groundwork of implementing something into products you actually already had. It made warehousing a lot easier for us. Um, so those are really, I would say, the main benefits from us as a as a manufacturer. And there is then, of course, also our client side. Um, in the past, our clients um, always had to choose from the very beginning with which um, backend provider they, they, they wanted to go. And this was more or less um, nearly a decision for life. Because if you already have products in the field and you cannot really change that backend anymore, you're more or less stuck with this company. And as your business model evolves, especially if you're a young company, um, you might figure out that different parts and um, what a company offers is becoming um, more important to you or you're maybe not satisfied with your um, partner anymore or maybe the company you've been working with goes bankrupt. Um, and with Open Pay Go Token, it really became like super easy for our partners to even have the option to change within the field and um, providers, which made their life a lot easier. So if you decide you want to go with a different backend, um, you basically just could do that on, on the back on, on the back end. Um, it was not anymore a question um, of changing hardware, going to every single client, collecting the system, exchanging the PCBA, and um, basically just like you change that over the um, over the back end, the user of the system would not even realize. And so you have a lot more flexibility and it really also helped to increase competitiveness in the market. Um, what Fabio also asked, what are the downsides of implementing um, open source? And I discussed a little bit of our engineers about it and there are not really a lot of points which came up. Maybe one very brief point. Um, we had during implementation one or two moments where it would have been nice to just pick up the phone and call someone, um, but nothing really severe and something we could have figured out in a couple of hours ourselves. There's a very um, good documentation openly available. And um, the second um, disadvantage we came across was, um, but I think this is more like an early adopter disadvantage, um, that the Paygo backend providers did not have implemented open Paygo token. So um, we were ready with our solution, but um, the, um, some of the um, backend providers were not. So this was in the beginning um, a little bit of yeah, back and forth of getting everything working. But um, right now we have everything running, we have everything set up. Um, for our new products, we're just using open Paygo tokens, I would say overall, it's a great success story. And thank you very much for doing that for us in the whole industry. Wow, uh, uh, thank you. And uh, and um, um, it's it's. Uh, I, I think there is a lot to unpack in what you just said. Um, and, uh, and and first, uh, yes, we are super proud of the uh, Open Paygo uh, token work. And uh, and uh, um, I think I think that's something that uh, Solaris Off Grid did a great job on. Uh, I also want to mention. Um, a similar effort by Angaza, in fact, around Nexus uh, uh, 
uh, channel key, Nexus key code, I think it's called. Uh, and that's, uh, that's in fact a similar implementation, but with uh, um, uh, effectively around the, 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 token, uh, the token system. But one thing that you did touch on is uh, sometimes we would have wanted to have someone to just, you know, call someone to help. And, uh, um, and that's it's not one of the things I did mention earlier, but that's actually one of the uh, things that we see companies uh, um, see as a surprise when they do share uh, an open source solution. Um, not everybody wants that, but some companies are actually happy to also start a bit of a consulting side gig uh, because they can, uh, because they are the best uh, to help with implementing a certain solution. And so um, companies are actually ready to say, hey, let me just pay you know, a few hundred dollars and get this right. And so let me go to the creator and uh, uh, I'm happy to pay them uh, a, a small fee to, to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And then you know, I keep going on my own, I can do the tweaking on my own and so forth. Um, that said though, uh, we've also been trying to help a bit on that front because also we recognized uh, uh, there was a bit of a of a need for more support when you adopt open source solutions. And for that reason, uh, we have recently uh, launched um, what we call the, uh, the open source uh, community. Um, you can find it um, at community.enaccess.org. And um, um, one of the things we really wanted to do uh, with, uh, uh, with the community was in fact to allow people to have a place where they could go and just ask like-minded people, um, hey, have you done this? And we are having this trouble with particular challenge. Has anybody encountered the same? And how did you fix it? How do you solve it? And so on. Uh, on that front, and I'm looking at Vibe, I, I am pretty sure it's gonna uh, talk about it later. You can see like, this is just a screenshot of the, of the community. And you can see that the very first thing appearing uh, is the Bluetooth application layer de development on Nexus channel. And this is something that Vibe uh, is working on. And there has been a lot of conversations between Angaza and Simu Solar on that, uh, on the platform. We uh, actively asked Vibe if he could uh, keep that conversation on the platform, specifically for one reason, we wanted to create a, a, a stream of information of, uh, that would stay uh, longer in time so that if someone else wants to actually implement something around extra channel in this particular case they would already find the same questions with the answers from Mangaza and uh, and and build on that effectively so uh, we're trying to help on the on the support side with this community as a way to connect people so that they can help each other uh, but thanks so much Catherine um Mark do you want to take take it and uh, and go on your experience um so so we really started with uh, SHS, as I said, which are really antiquated systems. I mean, we've, we've had systems in the field for the last 20 years. And our challenge was that um, everything was, was collected on a cash basis. Um, so we had no visibility of really what was going on in the business. And we wanted to, first of all, reduce our operational costs and have more insight into to what was happening with the business and then encourage customers to pay using mobile money so initially we looked at doing that ourselves um, that was probably about five years ago um, we came up with a database solution uh, having not gone to the industry um, in the past which turned out to be be quite uh, cumbersome and troublesome um, so when I actually took over as operations manager, we looked at what industry had to offer and open source really provided the solution we were looking for. So we've now started implementing the open token system um, in conjunction with Solaris. So we've, we've had to adapt our current SHS offerings by installing a, a Pago switch into all of them. And in that, there were obviously many challenges. I mean, because we've, We've had to train up staff. We continue to do that um, in the use of well, the installation of that. So there's been some technical challenges uh, with the equipment, um, as well as technical challenges with you know, the adoption of the, this new system and customers now paying with mobile money. So I mean, how have we got around that? It's really just uh, continuous training. 
Um, and you know, with the help of with the help of all the our implementers in the field, um, basically. And yeah, why not open source from scratch? Well, since that there's, I mean, as I said, we did try it um, and it wasn't successful. And the fact that there are these solutions and continuous improvement uh, with, with what's happening in the field all the time. So in future, we'll move away from um, having our own systems. Uh, we have modular systems as, at the moment, um, but as these systems age and we've yeah, they've come to the end of their life, we will then reach out to people like um, for Sarah, like Catherine, to install systems like that. I'm wondering how many uh, you know the, of the audience are are distributing and actually installing uh, uh, these systems. Um, and if you are, then you're like us. We're Simu Solar. We have to flash that logo there. But uh, we we actually are in the business of installing and distributing and warranting and and taking care of customers and things like that. So uh, so so when I when I think of uh, you know maybe if it's if you're someone like me, then you're thinking of, okay, should I adopt or not? Um, and, and, and my counter would be, you know, the adoption is, is not the biggest problem you're trying to solve. I'm, I'm sure um, the problems you're trying to solve are what is the right product market fit? You know, what quality can we affordably bring to the market? What is the segment that's going to help us scale? How do we cover for all these uncertainties on the government side and on the worker output? There's a knowledge gap, maybe there's logistics issues. How do we engage across cultural divides? We have at least four different cultures in my company itself, including the customers. So when you're trying to solve those problems, I'm not, I think we, you don't want to solve the expensive engineering problems really. And those are, are the ones that um, I, I guess this, this group of people is trying to solve together. Um, Cause I think engineering can be shared. You know, I think every engineer thinks that they have a brilliant idea and that's going to be the solution of everything. That's, that's, that's how we, you know, put ourselves through hard courses at school, everything, do our uh, little cubicle jobs, because we think we're going to change the world that way. But, but it really takes more than that, and as I think most most of you guys have seen. It's it's all these other problems to solve. Um, and then, and engineering is an expensive skill. It's an expensive problem to solve. And uh, but it is a collaborative uh, problem that that you know technology can move across different places and sort of still be a common common denominator. So there, that brings, I think, potential to what we're trying to do. Um, we are being uh, definitely on the adoption side, uh, uh, pushed by an access to make sure that we generate material like videos or anything that makes it easy for someone to start from scratch. So that I, I think that's, that's really a good push. Uh, uh, and then we're, on the other hand, are pushing an access to see, hey, are you guys doing the governance side? You know, are you making sure that if any changes to be made if someone is looking at it and, and so on? And, 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 and you all should too. So, so I was thinking if, if that, that's what really brings it all together, if there's a community, but then there's a direction that the community is able to take together, uh, I think that, that's what's going to take this uh, forward. Um, I did have three quick stories to tell us adoption. I mean, the challenges that are bigger than adoption, one is just venture scale. You know, we, we, we initially were looking at, okay, who can make a pay-as-you-go solution for us? And we con like contacted companies in China, US, and they, we got quotes like $60,000, $120,000, just for like a little something you don't even know if it's gonna work, right? That's that's kind of the scale of the cost. So if you're a venture in this space, that is, that is a big cost because you're trying to start small and trying to be nimble and try to figure out, okay, is there a market here? Um, the other one is a development. We finally did, uh, you know, get into pumps. Uh, we have our pump manufacturer now actually contacting our server. They designed the electronics for us. And now we're like, okay, so we want to do Bluetooth. And, and they said, we haven't even recovered the cost from your first development. We're not going to do a development again for you. So again, scale, right? We, if, if, unless you have market scale right in the beginning, it's really hard to convince people to try to get on the, whereas if there's open source, then I, what I'm trying to say to them is basically, if you do it for us, you're also doing it for, a lot of different potential markets in this uh, in the space. So um, the more the people adopt, the more sort of negotiating power you have with uh, manufacturers who are used to big markets. Um, so that's that's kind of an important one. Um, and then there's there's the risk. Like if you're if you have the one person who's making um, 
you know, token managed, uh, we do have one of our products that we're dependent on their server to manage tokens. Well, the product is used for productive use. That's what we do. Simusolar does only productive use, which means our clients make money when they use our product, which means if the product is not working just because they couldn't get a token, they're losing money by the minute. So this is not something we can rely, you know, and if we get repeated failures from this supplier on their server, for whatever reason, because they make products, they don't make software, whatever the reason is, we have no choice. There's no one else we can just switch to saying, okay, there's the same technology, let's try a different provider. So so that risk reduction, I think, also becomes um, so uh, important in, in our space. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's my take in general. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, again, there is, a, there is a lot of good points in this, and I think uh, uh, the risk element is, is something that is interesting you mentioned. Um, while this is not very much appreciated, um, I would say, yet in the, in the energy access space, there is definitely an element of uh, um, open source does reduce some of the risks um, around, in particular around you know, financial transactions and things that do involve, uh, you know, is there perhaps, uh, is the code solid, is is the code for that particular, um, you know, piece of communication or piece of unlocking, uh, you know, pay go tokens uh, solid. That's, uh, that's, for instance, something we put a lot of effort on uh, in our work with Solaris on open pay, pay go token. Um, our effort there was, well, we want to make sure that whatever is being developed can actually survive a, a, a essentially a crypto audit. We wanted to make sure that uh, people using OpenPayGo token, you know, in the coming years could actually just trust the fact that it was a solid piece of, of, uh, of software, something they could, you know, blindly rely on without having to worry about. And I think this goes very much to your point, uh, vibe of in the venture scale. Um, it would not have been possible to do that uh, if we had not, in our mind, the fact that we were doing that for the sector. Then it, you know, pretty much any cost was justified. Uh, it was because we didn't just have our own, let's say, uh, little garden to maintain. It wasn't just our own, say, 1,000 or 10,000 customers we were talking about. We were talking about, you know, countless customers because countless people could, in fact, adopt OpenPayGo token. And so uh, we were very happy to put resources into that partic particular uh, uh, project because of that. Um, there is another thing that uh, hopefully, you know, we, we will start seeing over time, and I think is the uh, cross pollination with other with other sectors. And uh, as much as we live and breathe uh, energy access, the reality is energy access is a relatively small sector, um, both in terms of age, it says arguably in its infancy, and uh, and also like as as uh, uh, financial weight is is only limited and and i think for instance we are now fostering a relationship and a partnership with um, the linux foundation energy um uh, effort so lf energy and they are very much focused around utilities and very large energy systems and uh, we're chatting with them on what can we bring from what you're doing down there to the energy access context which is very different yet they're doing a lot of open source and what can we adapt um to, to this question, actually, um, going back to Catherine, um, is, do you have any other thing that you see on the horizon that you think might be useful to you guys? Or do you uh, have other things that either you have already spotted and are sort of thinking about, or that you dream some of was to open source because you would love seeing them? Like how much this is open source, um, but I would like to see more standardization um, in the sector, and I think open source can be a part of that. Uh, starting by really simple things like, for example, connectors, um, starting with lamps that you can have solar system from company A and connect the lamps from company B. And this becomes especially important like when we talk about high power nodes like TVs, fridges, maybe also productive use that it's not anymore like you're more or less locked in one ecosystem and you can just use whatever is coming with your system, but you, that you can 
grow, you can upsell, you can also maybe replace a device by another one, just as we do that basically also know. Now with our grid power plug, we, we don't draw down our complete house if you just want to get a new TV. <laughs> um, and I think there, open source, especially when it comes like more to like higher power appliances, like for example, fridges, where we also need like to have um, certain intelligence in. Um, and I mean, this is also definitely something we're working on and implementing that we have like more of this communication protocols implemented. And I think um, in this sense, this is definitely one very interesting part. And um, there's like another thing which I just come a couple of days across and um, which I'm really excited and very curious to learn more are the so-called DRECs. So those um, energy certificates um, which are generated um, by usage of solar energy um, on a um, non-grid connected basis. So um, yeah, very excited to learn more about that and see if this is maybe something also open source could play really a part in. Just, uh, uh, just uh, actually comment on both things. So the first one is standardization. As, uh, as you're surely aware, there is a, a very nice piece of work done by Gogla. Um, it's uh, Gogla Connect, and uh, uh, we are honored to be part of that uh, that uh, group. And uh, it's a group that is uh, definitely looking at first standardization at connector level and really how to foster interoperability on a physical level. Uh, but definitely there is more work uh, coming. I, I see that we are, um, you can actually download the white paper, which is very interesting. Um, you can find the link in the, in the chat. Um, and that's an a Google Connect thing, and I think that's uh, that's coming. It's it's technically not an open source work as we would intend it more classically, but it definitely that's the spirit. And I think a lot of the uh, core components are going to be open source. Talking about DREX, in fact, um, uh, DREX is we're super proud of DREX uh, because we were the very first uh, supporters of DREX. And when we saw it, uh, our thought was this must be open source. It cannot stay closed. Uh, we have to have people uh, able to freely implement the DREX work and their protocols so they can start actuating effectively DREX through their hardware. Um, there is still a lot of work to do, that's for sure. But um, yes, we, we're super excited about it, uh, that's, that's for sure. And you can uh, you can actually see uh, some work we already did on promotion of the DREX initiative, and uh, there is a podcast on that too. So you'll, you'll, you'll find enough materials, hopefully. But feel free to reach out if, if you have any questions. Um, Mark, what's your, um, your dream uh, open source release? Um, what's that you really need? What's that you wish was there already? Or what's already there and you're thinking about uh, adopting? And for, for appliances and, and leading on to what uh, Catherine said as well, you know, standardization in that, in terms of um, appliances that are solar ready, um, that we can play use for productive use applications um, because we're really expanding in that market now at the moment. And I mean, our experience with the adoption, as I said earlier, has been really tricky because we've had to adapt our analog systems essentially to a, a Pago solution. So in future, it would be nice to you know, just have a solution that we just plug in and it goes and you know the customer can pay with, with mobile money. Um, yeah. I, I think I think that's it. I mean, definitely, and and I mean, um, on the on the irrigation side, you know, I mean, with uh, we, we've been and we, we're also getting lots of um, requests on that sort of equipment as well. So hopefully, more development and standardisation in that sector would would also help us. Productive views, I think. Uh... You have some experience there, and also, of course, the same question: like your 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 killer application, the thing that you really wish was open source already, or that you hope is going to be open source. Uh, yeah, so maybe I didn't miss exact. Was there a real actual question on, on the product views, or just general? Uh... Uh, hitting on the fact that they see much more demand for productive use coming, and and I, I think you have been really specializing on that in the. 
um, in the in the past years, and especially the irrigation. I think you have a lot of uh, um, solar pumps uh, work, uh, say, uh, under your belt. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and productive use, I think, is uh, is more. Uh... It tends to be, I think, more complex than more, most people think in terms of execution, but uh, I think it's also very promising in terms of sustainability because it really is about making the end user more productive, which means they make more money, which means they're more likely to pay back. And we've really seen that. We did pivot. We did home systems for a short time and then completely pivoted to productive use mm -hmm. now. Uh, so uh, we do see, um, you know, better repayment rates and so on. So I, w I would say it's it is an important uh, sector to grow mm -hmm. and i think it will in turn cause the home sector to grow it's kind of what happens if you have a good job you can buy nice stuff at home you know so exactly and create more sustainability in the sector as well um yeah which has yeah. been a problem that in the, is in our, the last mile <clears throat> definitely and we we call it last hundred miles yeah. because sometimes you have to go far out to install these things but uh, it's, uh, there, there are different problems you have to solve. I think there are uh, technology, knowledge problems, uh, service, you know, things, business stuff that breaks. People just don't go and buy something small again there. They need it to be fixed. They need everything. So they need sort of an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, we do have water pumps that there's the design, you know, who does the proper design and sizing mm -hmm. for you? Because you don't want to buy something that looks nice for your business. You want something that works well. Sometimes it's not true, but... Uh, yeah. Ideally, that's what it should be. So then there's a lot more on removing the the knowledge barrier from the design piece of it, what's the right. So in, in some sense, you're partnering really with your customer to make sure their productivity goes up. Uh, it's a very different approach. Um, but I think with a lot of potentials, that's, yeah. that's why I work at Simu Solar. Um, uh, switching to what I'm most excited about, I think, uh, uh, Actually, two things. One, I would actually uh, double on what uh, what Catherine said. In, in terms of like, there's direct, but there are other options. Like, there's carbon credits. There's things like that. So, if there is a standard way of measuring what we're doing and what we're achieving, uh, it would be easy for say a new fund or a new agency to say, okay, this is these guys are doing it in this standard way, which seems to be adopted by everyone, so it's trustworthy. So that that trust element, I think, is really important to um, to bring to that bring to the table and if if it's being done right uh, with the right security aspects in mind it's really important uh, the other uh, part i'm really excited about is is how do different distributors interact i think the there's questions and then some exciting pieces so uh, one one reason we made our um, uh, we're contributing the wireless piece is because we think that'll enable um, a way to find lost products so the so theft and you know, surreptitious use is kind of a problem here. Um, and if everyone's product kind of could talk, at least on a basic level to an, any other product wirelessly, then, or at least the bigger products could, then you could have, um, you know, suppose we're selling, I don't know, solar fishing lights and someone's making, I think in Kenya, there's a company making solar motorboats. Like, so, okay, so the solar motorboat is riding by and someone has stolen someone's fishing light and is keeping it on the beach and 100 meters away, the solar boat catches those lights and says, hey, this is where they are, you know, kind of thing. And the boat is, and the distributors of the two are totally different, but since their systems can talk and since there's a broker um, like an Axis, who is sort of third party agnostic, it can really create some, um, you know, we can leverage each other's work is what, what I was trying to get at. And that's kind of important to this nascent baby sector where no one really knows the right answer fascinating to me and uh, it is on the fact that while open source per se uh, works under the assumption that you have independent actors uh, that will either contribute to a certain innovation say a technology or something uh, and then other actors that might adopt it and and then you know make it theirs and customize it and whatnot um, we see there is more and more of a need for also a, a neutral third party to uh, act as a coordinator and that's uh, clearly we hope that an access can fulfill the role um, and i think the first thoughts around that actually came through the direct uh, direct initiative where there is a need for a an issuing body someone that actually says yes i recognize your 
measurement of, of uh, the kilowatt hour, for instance, that you have generated. And, uh, and um, I do now issue a certificate that you can you know, trade on a market and get money out for. Um, and I, I think a similar thing now comes in the case of, of uh, um, you know, theft and uh, wireless communication and, and theft detection. We see that there is probably a role for a, uh, a neutral body that just um, handles that sort of data in a confidential manner and allows people to know, okay, my, a, a certain set of data is actually sitting there and, uh, um, and I trust that third party. I trust that that third party is not going to share the data with anybody, but having everybody on the same, say, server with uh, which devices are, are detected by the Bluetooth uh, gateway means that we can actually start saying, hey, that device you just detected was stolen. And, uh, but we need, we need a, a coordinating agent for, for that particular work to happen. And so that's, that's I think, a next step. We are, we are uh, on our side trying to build towards that. Um, it comes without saying it's, a, it's an interesting journey because we have people that don't even know about open source in the sector and then others that are instead ahead enough to start feeling that need of, hey, but we need a, a, a central repository of data where we just don't act as independent uh, agents, but actually we are coordinating somehow. Um, uh, let me also say that, meanwhile, if there are questions, uh, uh, please uh, uh, feel free to send them uh, on in the chat, and uh, um, um, and we will try to answer them in the next uh, uh, in the next uh, few minutes. M meanwhile, uh, you can also see that uh, there is a link to our uh, uh, Open Energy Access podcast. Uh, this is this is a place where you can actually hear and listen to. Uh, conversations uh, uh, with uh, with people that have released open source materials and uh, what their experience was. So that's uh, typically a bit more, um, um, you know, in-depth conversations, uh, typically 30, 40 minutes conversation with one uh, one person only really to uh, flush out their story and, and know how that was. And uh, sometimes there is a lot of very nice uh, uh, things discovered. Uh, let me see meanwhile if any question is coming. I see none marked as such. So, uh, uh, I'm probably no questions quite yet, but yeah, please uh, uh, just just post them in the chat if you have any. And uh, yeah, you will also see the recording of this webinar as soon as we have uh, completed it. So typically it's uh, up in a couple of days and we will uh, share the link with, with you guys. Um, so let me let me go back to um, to Catherine, in fact. Um, what is that you imagine um, could not be open sourced. So what is that on your side? As for say, are you like, well, but that one, no, that one is not gonna happen. And why? Most probably I would be very reluctant open sourcing how our charge controller is functioning in detail. <laughs> um, because I think we put there, um, I guess there should be still like some kind of differentiation between different companies and um, more or less I see our charge controller re really as core part of our knowledge DNA and at least like for the product which are currently our best sellers, I would be a little bit reluctant open sourcing that. Uh, it's, um... As, as, a, as an organization that really uh, touches a lot of open source ideas and, and proposals, um, it's, it might sound funny, but one of the first things we tell people is just so that we are uh, on the same page, are you sure you want to open source this? And do you have a strategy around open sourcing this? We don't want you to open source it and then uh, regret it later. So that's definitely something that uh, we understand. Um, very quickly, uh, same to uh, Mark and then Vibav, and then I'm actually gonna uh, start wrapping up, I guess, uh, uh, with Gabriel. Mark. Um, I suppose our, our customer database. Um, but I mean, since we, I mean, we're not product developers, 
Um, and you know, as I said, we lost small distributors. We wouldn't want you know any other distributor to target our customer base. Um, but otherwise, no, I couldn't think of anything else really. No. Our differentiator is uh, the fact that we offer um, all the way up to four four kilowatt or so pumps uh, pay as you go, which no one else does, and that that's uh, all tied to the to a single pay as you go system. So that's something that's kind of a hardware piece that I think is not. Um, I wouldn't say it's unsolvable, but it's it's just something that takes people a little longer to resolve. So that something that maybe we'll open source in time. And just to close, so the last uh, the last question, um, your one suggestion, your one recommendation, your your uh, your one advice to anybody thinking, okay, yeah, I could adopt this certain open source, uh, piece of open source innovation technology business model. What's the one thing that you would tell them, uh, same order as so Catherine Mark and Vibe what what is that this one person should know hey just make sure that you what's that thing Catherine um from our experience I would just tell them do it it has been it has been really a great experience a great relief in work um and yeah, I guess really it, it, it's all about sharing. And um, I think what everybody here can said, what you wouldn't open source is really like your USB, your core strength, but everything which is more or less just like, um, yeah, additional features to your core product, but which are necessarily to, to make it work. Don't invent a real twice. And um, especially when you are still like a young company and not very big or you're a small organization, don't don't try to reinvent the real twice. <laughs> What's out there? So building on what Catherine said, I mean, we we learned a mistake as an organization as an organization of of trying to do something that was already done and which wasn't successful at all um, when there were really good products in the market already. And similarly with our SHS. You know, rather than have these component systems, you know, look look to people like Forsera to to install, you know, or to to buy their products. So do your research very well. Thanks. I think the technology is again not the end product. It's for example, this does open source, pays you a control and all that, but you still have to manage your loans. You still have to get collect money somehow. You still have to convince your customers this is good to buy. So if you're a distributor like us, and I think um, introducing it at the right time is also important. It's not a panacea for every kind of problem that you might be facing with any uncertainty, but it's it's more about uh, the right fit in, into the model. And the community And indeed on the community, so yeah, please engaged. feel free to join our uh, community. Uh, also to know more about open source. And I'm saying that because meanwhile, the results of our polls are being uh, displayed. And uh, you can in fact see that there's quite a few people participating today that um, did not uh, really know about open source before this webinar or um, have not yet used uh, open source solutions. So uh, yes, do it, uh, start using open source solution. Um, hopefully you could see that uh, there is at least three people in the world and you are seeing them now that have used open source solutions in their companies and are pretty happy about us. So maybe that's a good, it's a good testimonial of the situation. Um, thank you so much for everybody. And, and uh, uh, Gabriel, the floor is back to you uh, for the concluding remarks. And thanks for the others for this great uh, webinar. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Fabio. And really, thank you also to, to the panelists. It, it was indeed, again, a very interesting conversation, a very interesting discussion, insightful. As I already said last time, I'm also learning uh, on open sourcing. So um, thank you very much for, for this. I think it should also really encourage, as you said, uh, the, the participants of, of this um, 
of this webinar or all kind of different stakeholders uh, to engage more, uh, to talk about it and uh, to talk with each other. What I really liked uh, about uh, what came through in, in all of your contributions, I would say is that it is, um, it's, it's really about sharing, it's, a, it's about uh, collaborating um, and uh, together really try to find solutions to accelerate the development of the market, really to always also uh, towards the achievement of um, the energy access uh, objectives. Um, so uh, for us uh, at the, at the um, Alliance, it's, it's definitely very exciting and in, it's interesting to, to follow this uh, conversation, the developments, and also in the future, we will be more than happy, you know, to, to support and, and also to, uh, to talk and communicate about what, what's going on, how this uh, open sourcing uh, develops. Um, because I think um, potentially there are still other stakeholders that could be involved in the, in, in the conversation. So we are really happy and open to see how that will um, evolve. And, and, um, and we would like to, well, what actually our mandate is to be a platform and, and to facilitate also the, the knowledge exchange and, and collaboration and being a platform to, to facilitate and, and support also these, um, these discussions. So uh, I'm curious uh, and looking forward to, to, the, to the developments, what's, what's going to come next and uh, wishing you all really uh, a lot of, of success with, um, with, with uh, your activities. And um, yes, it, it was a pleasure um, um, supporting uh, this series and, um, and we are hoping that uh, more will follow. Thank you. Thank you bye very bye. much. Uh, Thank you very much to, to the yeah, panelists bye, very much. and to all the participants and yeah, wishing you uh, a nice bye. rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>